Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Kelly from Signature Solar and we're super excited to introduce you to our lineup of climate control solutions. Whether you're looking for standard air conditioning or heater options, or just intent on saving big bucks with solar, we've got the perfect solution to elevate your comfort. Here at Signature Solar, we offer the EG4 9K and 12K mini split air conditioner heat pump standard units and their hybrid solar cousins, the 12K and 24K. These are not just about temperature control, whether cooling or heating your home, they're about lifestyle enhancement and comfort. Don't miss it, these units are air conditioners and heaters all in one. Let's dive in. Here we have the 12K standard unit. Let's open this box and see what we have. Got our drain pipe, we have our smart cable, our remote holder, putty, our wall sleeve, some mounting screws, some AA batteries, the manual, We've got our remote control. This is our indoor head unit. The mounting plate is on the back here. I'm not going to take that cover off just yet. Open the bottom box. Here's our outdoor compressor unit. We've got our refrigerant piping here on the back. And our outdoor unit. This is our 12K version. We have our drain pipe. Some sealant tape. Okay, we're looking at the back of the indoor unit here. You can see our bracket comes attached by a screw, which we'll, um, we'll take that off so that we can mount it on our display here. Um, we've got our pre-charged line sets with the quick connectors. Uh, they come wrapped in their insulation. And we've got our drain pipe coming from the right side of our unit. The 9K units have the same accessories and look exactly the same. Now, our hybrid solar units, 12K and 24K, also come with the same accessories, including the pre-charged line sets, which keeps the insulation simple. The only difference is that you would need to purchase your solar panel separately to tie into these units. The max open current voltage from PV is rated at less than 380 watts for both of these units, with a minimum input of 90 volts DC. The 12K is a one-ton unit, like the standard, and the 24K is a two-ton unit and runs on 240 AC as well as solar. Look at how simple this is. All our units feature plug-in cool technology installation and as easy as plug and play. No vacuum pulls, no specialized tools required. You can be up and running in no time. In fact, the installation for the standard and hybrid units are the same with the exception of the additional connection to the solar PV modules to supply the DC input in the hybrid models. With the option of four different units, we have a solution for every space. Let me show you how to match a unit to your room square footage. This part is crucial for maximizing efficiency, so let's take a closer look at what BTU means and how it relates to each of our units. BTU is an acronym that stands for British Thermal Unit, a measurement of how much energy an air conditioner uses to remove heat from indoor air. BTU typically shows how much heat an air conditioner can remove within one hour. If your air conditioner has too many BTUs for your home size, your energy cost could increase. However, an AC unit with too few BTUs may not properly cool your home. Understanding BTU can be the key to choosing the right air conditioning system to keep you comfortable while making sure your energy bills stay affordable. Our 9K and 12K units deliver over 9,000 BTU and 12,000 BTU, perfect for smaller to medium spaces, 500 to 650 square feet respectively. Need something more robust? The Solar 24K gives you a whopping 24,000 BTU, which is ideal for larger rooms up to 1,350 square feet. You can even have multiple units for larger spaces such as workshops or warehouses. As we begin to dig deeper into how to choose the right cooling unit for our home, we must also consider the SEER ratings. The higher the SEER rating, the higher cooling efficiency of your unit which signifies the lower your bill should be. 
our mini splits have the new SEER 2 rating. So let's talk about what that means. SEER 2 stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio 2. Starting from January 1st, 2023, these SEER 2 ratings are used instead of the older SEER ratings. SEER 2 helps us measure how well air conditioners and heat pumps work. The SEER 2 test is tougher and more like real life conditions, so the results it gives are more precise. Because of this, the efficiency numbers you get from SEER 2 testing might be lower compared to the old SEER testing. It's like giving a more accurate report card for how well these machines use energy. Specifically, SEER 2 is the total heat removed from the conditioned space during the annual cooling season. The higher the SEER 2 rating, the more efficient the unit. Technical details matter. Running on 115 volt AC, efficiency takes center stage. The 9K and 12K units crush the competition with their SEER 2 ratings. The 9K boasts an impressive SEER 2 rating of 29.5, while the 12K is very close with a SEER 2 of 28.5. These units aren't just keeping you comfortable, they're saving you energy and money. The hybrid solar units also come with their own ratings of 22 for the 12K and 21 for the 24K, both exceeding industry standards. Remember, the higher the SEER 2, the lower your bills. Let's talk solar. In our hybrid solar units, we have the 12K one-ton unit and the 24K two-ton unit. What sets these air conditioning systems apart is their AC-DC hybrid power inputs. Harness the sun's energy directly through MC4 connectors attached to the outside unit. On sunny days, your energy savings can reach up to 100% when utilizing solar inputs. By connecting your unit to PV modules and plugging it into your home outlets, your mini split can effortlessly transition between the power sources. This enables smooth operation during nighttime hours or when solar power is insufficient. Utilizing home electricity only when needed, this hybrid solar mini split presents a highly economical solution for heating and cooling your residence. But it's not just about functionality. EG4 knows that aesthetics matter too. That's why these units blend seamlessly into your surroundings, leaving you with more room to express yourself. Hanging simply on a bracket fastened to the wall with one small hole for compressor wires, these units look nice and don't take up much room. Let's go through the installation to show you just how simple this is. So grab your tools. So here's the tools we'll be needing for today's installation. A tape measure, scissors, a screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a drill. We've got a drill bit with a Phillips head and a two and a half inch a hole saw. We've got a level, some painter's tape, some Teflon tape, and don't forget your safety gear. Before you start mounting the indoor head unit, it's crucial to pick a spot that offers excellent airflow, easy access for drainage, is at least three feet away from other electronic devices, and can adequately support a weight of nearly 40 pounds. Additionally, make sure to leave enough room for a wall hole to accommodate the signal cable and refrigerant piping that will connect the indoor unit to the outdoor unit. When attaching the wall mounting plate to the wall, there's some specific measurements we need to follow. Uh, you need to be at least six inches or 15 centimeters from the ceiling. Mine is gonna be a little bit different because we're installing this for a portable display. So be sure and check your manual for specific requirements for your installation. We also need to be sure that there's at least 12 centimeters or four and three quarter inches on each side and that you mount it about 98 and a half inches from the ground. A second. We've already removed the screw and got the mounting plate from the back of the indoor unit. So we're gonna place this flush against the wall, drill out your pilot holes. I'm gonna go ahead and put my center hole in here. And then I wanna make sure it's level before drilling my other holes. So you just want to make sure that your bracket is flush to the wall. Next, we need to drill the wall hole for the connective piping. The refrigerant piping 
drainage pipe, and the signal cable will all run from the indoor unit through the hole and connect to the outdoor unit. Since we have the 12K unit, we will use a two and a half inch core drill. We're going to drill our hole to the right of the bracket. Looking at page 14 in the manual, we'll measure from the center of the right leg of the bracket out about three and quarter inches and about one and three quarter inches from the bottom of the bracket to the center of the mark. And that's where we'll drill our hole. Make sure to drill the hole at a slightly downward angle so that the inside hole is about a quarter inch higher than the outside hole. This will ensure proper drainage. You also want to make sure that you don't drill into any piping or electrical wiring that may be hiding behind the surface of your wall. We'll start the hole on the back side so that we know where we started on the front side. Okay, we are good to go. Now we'll place the wall cuff in the hole to help protect all of our wires that go through and also to help in sealing in the end. Let's prepare our refrigerant piping. One quick note is that there are knockout panels on the side of your unit if you absolutely need to take your piping out the side. However, if you made your hole next to your bracket like we did, we can leave those here and we'll go directly out the back of the unit. Our refrigerant piping is wrapped inside the insulation attached to the back of the unit. Okay, we also need to connect our drain hose. The hose comes shipped attached to the right hand side of the unit as you're looking at it from the back. We'll need to remove it and replace it on the same side as our other piping. If you need to remove it and attach it to the other side, make sure to install the rubber plug that we'll show you in just a moment. It has to go into this unused drain hole over here on this side. We'll take our needle nose pliers and swivel our hook around. I may have to, there we go. So this little hook swivels around and catches on a peg on the inside. We'll remove the the drain plug and we'll be sure and put that in on the other side here in a moment. Use some needle nose pliers if you need to help you reach that area. Should be good. Give it a little tug to be sure. Don't forget to reinstall your drain plug on the right side of the unit where you removed your drain hose. So the drain hose must exit the unit on the same side as your piping. We will now attach the rest of the drain hose to this and wrap it with Teflon tape to ensure that we don't have any leaks. And you'll want to keep the inside uh, drain pipe, whatever's going to be on the inside, wrapped with insulation to reduce your condensation. Okay, we've got that attached. We're going to wrap that with Teflon tape to make sure that we don't have any leakage. Based on the position of the wall hole relative to the mounting plate, determine the necessary angle of your piping. Grip the refrigerant piping at the base and slowly bend with even pressure in the direction needed to easily feed through the wall hole. Take extreme caution when bending to not dent or damage the pipe while bending them will affect the unit's performance. Okay, let's get this signal wire connected. We'll first remove the wire box on the front of the indoor unit. And I've seen some videos in the manual which recommends feeding this wire up through the back side of the unit. I had a hard time finding where I needed to feed it through. So my suggestion is to just go through the front of the unit. We'll have to remove this uh, wire clamp right here and your wire will go directly down this way. So this wire has two ends. I'm going to feed the one with the covered ends through to the back side. Okay, and as you can see, um, our wires are labeled with numbers. We have our brown is one, our green or blue is two. Our black is three, and then we have our ground wire, which has a ring connector, and the other three have U-lugs. We'll connect those to the corresponding screws labeled one, two, three, and ground. Make sure they're all snugly secured, and then we'll take our ground.
Okay, just give those a little tug to make sure that they're all really secure. We've got our brown wire going to our number one terminal, our blue wire, which is also labeled number two, going to the number two terminal, our black wire, which is labeled number three, is going to our number three terminal, and our green yellow wire going to our ground lug. We'll go ahead and replace our wire clamp. And now we can replace our terminal cover. Before passing the piping through the drain hole, we want to bundle them together. Make sure your drain hose is on the bottom. Uh, we'll wrap them with painter's tape just securely to make it easy to get it through the hole to keep everything together. And then we can take this off once we get it through. It's not pretty, but it'll do the job. Go ahead and cover all of the ends of our refrigerant piping. And now we're ready to attempt to put our piping, our smart cable, our drain pipe through the wall hole and hang this indoor unit on its mounting bracket. So we'll carefully guide this bundle of pipes through the holes. And right here on the back side of our unit will be where we will hook this on the top of our mounting bracket and we'll have to press down firmly so that the clips on the inside here will lock into place on the inside of these holders. Now that our piping is through the wall and the indoor unit is secured, let's install our outdoor unit. We need to once again go through the location selection process. Are you going to install it on the ground or on a bracket? Check the manual specifications for choosing the correct location, spatial requirements for air circulation, and protection from direct elements or snow accumulation. It is recommended to secure this unit with bolts onto a bracket or a firm level pad. In this installation, however, our unit is being designed to be portable Therefore, our outdoor unit is going to sit directly on the ground because secure it on a piece of plywood to keep it level. Heat pump units require a drain joint and a hose extension to redirect water from the unit during the heating mode. We'll take our drain joint and install it in the bottom of the unit. This unit should just click into place. and a drain pipe would be connected to this um, and have it exit the water wherever you would prefer that would not be directly under the unit. The unit is now ready to be anchored down. The outdoor unit can be anchored to the ground or to a wall mounted bracket with M10 bolts. Check out the dimensions in the manual starting on page 23 to prepare the installation base. A couple of things to note, if you're installing this into a concrete base, you will need to pre-drill your holes, then clean the concrete away from the holes. Please make sure and use eye protection at all times when drilling concrete. Also, if installing onto a wall bracket, make sure the wall is made of strong enough material to support at least four times the weight of the unit. That would be around 320 pounds. As we move on to connecting the signal and power cables to the outdoor unit, it's our responsibility to remind you that all wiring should be in accordance with both local and national electric codes. For your safety and to ensure compliance, we recommend these installations be carried out by a licensed electrician. The outside unit's terminal block is protected by an electrical wiring cover on the side of the unit. You can see a wiring diagram printed on the inside. We just remove the four screws from here to remove this cover. Now we need to select the right cable size for our device. Looking at the chart on page 25 of your user manual, you see wiring and amp size recommendations for each unit. Since we are using the 12K standard unit, it is recommended that we use 12 gauge wire with a 20 amp breaker. So we will make sure to have those on hand. Here's the wire that we will be using as supply wire and it is going through a 20 amp panel breaker box. Next, let's remove the caps on the conduit panel. You can choose whichever location you want your wires going in. Okay, so we'll run our wire through the hole that we took the conduit cover out of. 
And then we will connect our hot wire, which is our black wire, to L for line one, our white wire to N for neutral, and then our green wire will go to our ground, which is actually going to be in a screw hole right there. We'll undo the wire clamp. Be careful not to drop these screws. Once again, we've got our black hot wire connected to the L terminal. We have our white wire connected to our neutral terminal. And then our green ground wire goes to a ground screw that goes into the hole in this metal casing here. Okay, let's connect the other end of our signal cable again. We've got brown to one blue to two, black to three, and then this ground wire, which is green-yellow, will go to this grounding screw right here. So I'll remove the protective covers and connect your lugs to the terminals. Make sure you have your brown wire to your number one terminal, your blue wire to your number two terminal, your black wire to your number three terminal, and then your green yellow wire over here to this ground screw. All right, let's close up our terminal block cover. It's time to install our refrigerant piping. So we'll remove this one screw from the piping covers. And then if you'll kind of lift up and then rock out, you can remove the cover. Notice on the inside, we have some clips. We'll use those later to lock off our refrigerant piping connectors. I just wanted to point out real quickly that our power supply line is going through a 20 amp panel breaker box and into an inverter. We're going to use an inverter because we're going to power our mini split from a battery rack to make this unit portable. It's time to work on our refrigerant piping. The quick connector tubing is factory fabricated and tested to ensure leak free connections. The connection system is double sealing valve with an automatic safety valve that releases the refrigerant only when the outdoor unit is connected and sealed. It is important that you take care in bending the copper tubing, avoiding any kinks to prevent leaks. If you have excess tubing, it can be neatly coiled behind the unit, making sure not to block airflow into the unit. Keep in mind that altering the tubing length is not recommended. Notice you have two different wires for re your refrigerant piping. One has a skinnier copper coil. The other one is a larger copper coil. One of them has a two inch connector, it says, and the other one says four inch connector. Make sure you're attaching the skinny copper and the four inch connector with the skinny copper and four inch connector. We'll remove the protective caps. We'll do the same with the larger copper wire, where it says two inch. Remove the protective cap. Now the manual says we need to tighten these to 25 to 30 newton meters or 20 foot pounds. So I'll get the torque wrench and we'll make sure that these are tightened to the appropriate torque. Okay, so once we finger tighten those pretty snug, we need to tighten them to 20 foot-pounds or 25 to 30 newton meters. Okay, we'll do the same thing with our connectors that go to our outdoor unit. We'll start with the smaller copper wire first. Remove the protective cap. Do the same thing with the larger Copper piping. Remove your protective covers once again. Okay, we have our refrigerant piping connected. The next thing we've got to do is take off these valve covers so that we can open up the refrigerant to let it start to flow. We'll need a hex wrench key to turn the bottom valve cover counterclockwise until it seats all the way against the outer seal and we'll hear the air begin to flow. When we hear the air flow, we need to keep turning it 
until it stops turning. Okay, it won't turn anymore. So I'll replace, replace this cover here. And I need to also tighten these to about 25 foot pounds. Let's do this to the top one. Okay, it won't turn anymore. So it's all the way out. And we'll replace this and tighten it to 25 foot, foot pounds. We're almost there. It's time to check for leaks and complete a test run. You'll find detailed guidance on pages 27 through 29, which provide valuable information. For safety purposes, please consult the manual to ensure you complete all necessary electrical safety checks, including a thorough inspection of your ground connections. Once the electrical checks are completed, it's essential to inspect the quick connects on both the outdoor and indoor units for any potential gas leaks. To inspect for gas leaks, I'll be using a mixture of soapy water, which I'll run around the entire connection. If you spot any bubbles forming, this is a clear indication of a leak, and it's crucial to address and rectify the issue before operating your unit. After confirming that there are no leaks, we can proceed to reattach the valve cover on the exterior unit. But before we do that, we want to make sure and put these pins in to secure our connections and make sure nobody can come by and accidentally unscrew these. We'll do this on all four connections. All right, let's check it out. Compressor kicked on. Vents opened up, starting to blow air out. It's getting pretty cold. Wonder about the heat. Turn the temperature up. And I'm starting to feel some warm air. Hopefully your unit passed all the tests as ours did and we're excited to get started. But wait, it gets even better. EG4 has even designed user-friendly remote controls, giving you the power to create your perfect climate with ease from anywhere in the room. Set your temperature, fan speed, aim the vents to control the direction of airflow, and enjoy cold or warm air depending on your needs. Most of the remote is very self-explanatory. However, I don't want my degrees being displayed in Celsius. I can change this easily, but only on the remote. To change to Fahrenheit, press the up and temperature down button at the same time. If this doesn't work, you may need to turn off your remote and hold the temperature up and fan button for about five seconds, then power the remote on again. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you can't locate your remote control? EG4 has you covered there as well. All you need to do is download the dedicated app for Android or iOS, register your device, and follow the instructions outlined in the manual. To download the app, scan the QR code in the manual or from the sticker on the side of the indoor unit. To initiate the pairing process for your mini split, simply press the light button on the remote at least eight times within a 10 second window. Once you hear a beep, the Wi-Fi indicator will start flashing, indicating that it's ready to pair. Now connect your phone to the Wi-Fi network and the mini split should automatically be detected. With this app, you'll have the power to control your unit from anywhere through Wi-Fi. Plus, you can keep a close eye on your energy saving data and monitor your consumption by the hour, day, month, or even year. Noise, not an issue. All units are engineered to run quietly, allowing you to work, relax, or sleep undisturbed. So here we have a 24K two-ton unit that is installed at our workplace. And this is the outdoor compressor unit. Reading on average about 70, 71 decibels. We have also got multiple units running. So how do you choose the right unit for you? The first step is to decide how big the room is that you want to heat or cool. This will help you match the mini split to fit your square footage. Next, decide on solar or standard. 
Do you already have solar panels that can power this mini split? Do you want to start your journey to being energy independent and are able to invest a little more in solar panels? Then the hybrid solar unit is for you. Looking simply for an energy efficient and wallet friendly solution to regulate your home's temperature? Our standard units are your best bet for top notch efficiency at a cost that makes sense. To give you peace of mind, all EG4 mini splits come with a five year limited warranty. Embrace innovation. Embrace sustainability. Check out these products and more on our website at SignatureSolar.com. Feel free to post any questions in the comments below or give us a call and let our sales team guide you through your decision making process. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar, and we're not just selling products, we're empowering lifestyles with the belief that solar is for everyone.